Alright, so today we're going to be going over the next part of our writing series, which is a, writing a proper persuasive conclusion. I'd highly recommend that today we're going to be going very fast, so you might be interested in pausing the video occasionally so you can catch up with your notes. So what is the purpose of the concluding paragraph? Is it just to wrap things up, to summarize what you've talked about? No, not at all. The conclusions clearly connect the intro to the body of the paragraph, body of the paper, forgive me. It gives a sense of completion, but it does more than restate your thesis. It actually gives the reader something to think about. Now, how do you give them something to think about? Well, it's there are two ways. You have two ways to create effective uh, conclusions. You can either have a call to action or you can offer a solution. A call to action is when the writer implores, which means essentially begs or convinces, the audience to change. And, and similarly, offer a solution, instead of begging you or trying to force you into change, you suggest, so you suggest some possibilities, I ran out of space there, so possibilities to resolve the problem, to fix a problem. So these are the two ways that I want you to focus on when creating uh, effective conclusion paragraphs for persuasive writing. Call to action, remember, with this, you're including a final appeal to reinforce your argument. So reinforce the argument, your final appeal. You clearly state your desired action, so you forcefully tell them what they need to do. And you give information needed to take that action. Whereas with offer, offering a solution, you're restating the problem. Then you, more importantly, define and develop the solution. And that means you have to explain multiple ways of fixing this. But more importantly, you have to tell them why they're, they're different. Why the strengths are, the, you have to, I'm sorry, you have to give the strengths of those solutions. Why those solutions are powerful and why they should be used. How is this different? From a uh, call to action, very simply, uh, the offer solution is more a suggestion. So instead of telling them what to do, you're suggesting them. And it stresses the solution more than the problem. So it stresses solution more than the problem. So let's take a look at an example for call to action. Call to action here. Daily mandatory homework for high school students would serve no real worthwhile purpose but to unnecessarily stress out students and teachers alike. So right here, they're, re they're giving us a, a final appeal to reinforce their argument. Next up, teachers and students are busy, stressed, preoccupied, and quite frankly strung out enough as it is without this. So bam, we're giving them our main idea of why we shouldn't be doing this. Please, I urge you not to put this in effect. Not simply because I don't want homework for all seven classes every day, but because it would be truly detrimental to everyone. So we've given our, we've given our action. It will hurt us. That's what it means to detrimental to everyone. So I urge you not to put it into effect. Now let's take a look at offering a solution. This one's a little bit less intense. Now let's take a look at offer solution. According to high schools with the highest test scores across the country, homework is only necessary when an individual student doesn't understand a concept or needs additional practice. So as you can see right there, they restate the problem and they are their claim that unless you absolutely need the practice, you don't need this. Therefore, mandatory homework in every class would be meaningless. Instead, so now we're offering our solution or suggestion, Teachers should assign homework on an individual basis. This solution, now we're doing our strengths here, that's what this is. This solution would provide students with needed practice without needless busy work for students and endless grading for teachers. So as you can see here, we offer a solution, and then immediately after, we explain why that is a strong solution, why that's a good idea. Things to avoid. Do not summarize your essay, ever. 
Do not do this. You're not saying, today I talked about these three things or anything like that. Do not use the phrase I. And do not forget to use persuasive words. I urge, I suggest, things along those lines. So let's take a look at a live example real quick. We have our intro right here along with our body. Now I want you to pause and read this for me and then uh, come back to me and we'll decide on what to do for our conclusion. So should we do a call to action or offer a solution? Really it just depends on our paper. Is our paper really something that needs to be addressed permanently with everybody or is it just something that needs to be uh, suggested? Well, since we're not having a major issue here, it just we probably should just suggest something. So we're going to offer a solution. So let's take a look. As a result, large populations in big cities pre prevent you from enjoying nature and maintain a healthy lifestyle. So that goes over with our two paragraphs, our supporting paragraphs. Instead, there we go, relocating to a smaller town will provide you with the comforts necessary to remain healthy. So we provide our solution. Let's relocate here. Maybe instead of living in a large city, and then we give our idea why this is stronger, one can live in a small town and just work there, and that's supposed to be work in the larger city. So we give our solution, and it's twofold. Relocate to a smaller town and enjoy the larger city by working there, so you'll still be close to one, but not be so uh, far away that you can't enjoy uh, nature. So a conclusion. The last paragraph is your final point on your position. If you've counted sentences, you notice that these th paragraphs are less than three to four sentences long. Watch out for certain things to avoid. Don't just summarize your paper. Do not forget to use persuasive words. And always think this, should I have a call to action or offer a solution? All right, see you guys in class tomorrow.